wisdom and revelation. You know, Ephesians 1 says, Paul prayed for the Ephesians that they would have a spirit of wisdom and revelation. So I became, it became clear to me, and by the way, there's, a, there's an Old Testament word. We don't have one in English that I know of. But in the Old Testament, there is a Hebrew word that em, embodies both concepts, not just wisdom, that which we've learned and, and walked out that has become not just knowledge, but the right application of knowledge and understanding, wisdom, Right? So the word embodies wisdom, but it also embodies revelation. That's not what you learn. That's what is given to you spontaneously by Holy Spirit, whether it's a dream, whether it's revelation from a scripture, whether it's a vision. Revelation is the now word of the Lord. And God starts showing me if we're going to win a spiritual war, we're going to have to walk in both. Yes. It's not enough just to have revelation. You can have revelation and just make a mess. Yeah, you can get dreams and visions and, you know, see things. And if you don't know what to do with that, you just create confusion yeah. and you can make a mess. Sure but on the other hand, it's, you can mess. You can. You can miss what God is doing and be very, very wise. Now, a lot of people don't think that way. They don't know that. Just because you're wise in the ways and scriptures, the ways of the Lord, scriptures, etc., that doesn't guarantee success. Because without revelation, you won't know how to apply the wisdom that you've gained. So we're in a season right now that I feel like it's very important that we walk in both. I actually believe that the gifts of apostle and prophet picture wisdom and revelation. The, it's not that apostles wouldn't have any revelation, but they would, they would lean more toward wisdom. The prophets would lean more toward revelation, and that doesn't mean they don't have any wisdom. It means what they are gifted to bring the most would fall in those categories. And in this season, we're going to have to listen to the prophets and apply the wisdom of what to do with that from the apostles. Yes. Sure. So I've been meditating on that once again. And I've been saying, asking the Lord to give us a fresh outpouring, baptism, of the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Now, the Lord says of the sons of Issachar in 1 Chronicles 12, 32, they had understanding of the times. And the word understanding, there is that Hebrew word that embodies both wisdom and revelation. They understood the times with a knowledge of what Israel should do. The reason they had understanding of what to do is because they walked in a combination of wisdom and revelation. Daniel was said to operate in this uh, being, B-I-Y-N, this marriage of wisdom and revelation. Solomon walked in a marriage of this. So Daniel was able to be used by God to restore a nation, not be, just because he was wise, not just because he was a dreamer, but, but because he had an anointing and an impartation and a heart to walk in both wisdom and revelation. That's really not my message. That's just an introduction. And I'm throwing it out there because I, I consider this to be a prayer night. And I'm assigning you to pray with me that the leaders God has raised up in this hour to help the ecclesia do and accomplish everything he wants them to do, that they will walk in a very high level of wisdom and revelation.
In fact, as I say it now, I, I, I see in the spirit a window opening. I knew the Lord was leading me to start with this, not really knowing fully why. But I, I can see in the spirit a window opening. And it is a window of wisdom and revelation. I'm just going to prophesy right now and say to you, there is a stronger joining coming quickly between the apostle and the prophet. Prophets need to walk very closely with apostles so that the apostles can help judge the words and help know what to do with those words. Apostles need to walk with the prophets because if they don't or move in a prophetic anointing themselves, really it should be both, they will get stale. And they will think they can build with good ideas because they have lots of them. They're thinkers, they're strategists. But they need the prophetic voice of the Lord, the revelation, to help them know the timing and the, to fine tune what God has given to them. So Lord, we ask you to open this window wide. We ask you to bring a stronger marriage of the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Give us, Lord, what you gave Joshua, Daniel, Solomon, Paul prayed the Ephesian church would have it, Issachar. Give us the ability to hear, but also give us the spirit of wisdom. And I'm just going to pause here and say, this is not just understanding that comes from knowledge that you have gained over the years. Because Solomon was given a spirit of wisdom. Daniel was. Joshua, it says, uh, it is said of him that he had a spirit of wisdom because Moses laid hands on him. This was, this was an impartation that brought a gift that somehow opened the mind and put understanding from heaven into the mind of a man. So, Lord, we're asking you for this to go to a higher level. Amen. We're asking you, Lord, that when we're called into high offices and positions, government positions, education positions, when we're asked to help rebuild nations, when we're asked to deal with crises, that you will have men and women ready to speak with incredible revelation and incredible wisdom. Now, Lord, let this window open wide. Holy Spirit, we're asking you to pour this out from this window and baptize us afresh and anew. May we literally begin to think your thoughts. May we process your thoughts in such a way that we can apply heaven's understanding into the earth. Show us what to do in these strategic times when the enemy is fighting with great anger and, great, and very relentlessly to try and stop what you are doing, but that you would have leaders in the kingdom that know what heaven is saying that can echo what heaven is saying and apply what heaven is saying. We pray, Lord, that this will be strong enough that it will cause us not to be distracted by all the unbelief and all the garbage and all of the meaningless uh, rhetoric that flies uh, so 
strongly and Lord with such intensity. Give us ears to hear you. It's not just for leaders, by the way, it's for all of us. Lord, I pray for everyone watching. I pray for, I hope, thousands of people tuning into this now or later. That in their homes, their automobiles, they would lift their hands now and drink in this impartation from you. I pray that pastors and leaders that are struggling to know what to do next, how to build, how to prepare for what's coming. I pray, Lord, that they will be able to receive this impartation from heaven so that they can hear from you and that the loud noises around us would not distract us. Amen.